To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. I have told you these things so that you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. It's Revelation chapter 3, verse 21, and John chapter 16, verse 33, out of the New International Version. Good morning to all of you thriving people of God. This is Pastor Enrique Brooks of Thrive Church, and we truly give God praise for your presence today on this TGIF. Come on, say it with me. Thank God I am free because thank God I am forgiven and thank God it is Friday. Yes, what a wonderful way for you to start your day, holding fast to your commitment to pray. And we believe at Thrive that a church that prays together is a church that will indeed thrive together. And so we give God praise for your presence, knowing that we have been faithful all the week long. There's something special about you. You started out this week with us and you're closing out this week with us in a mighty way. And perhaps you said, well, Pastor, I wasn't here on Monday. But the fact that you're here on Friday still shows that you are committed and you have a whatever it takes mentality to pursue the presence and the and the power of God. Amen. And so, my brothers and sisters, as we're getting ready to go into our devotion or go into this weekend, rather, I want to invite you to. Um, of course, the two gatherings or worship encounters that are going to happen this weekend. The first one is on Saturday. It's prayer at the altar. Amen. At 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Saturday morning, we're going to come together for prayer at the altar. This is where I believe we become most like Christ when we lay down our lives on the behalf of others and we lift others up in prayer. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I want you to know that revival has come for the victorious. I want you to say that aloud this morning. Say revival has come for the victorious. Well, pastor, what do you mean by that? Understand that we are victorious by design, but many times we live as though we're not. And so what God is doing in this season as we are in this series titled Destined for Victory, God has brought has brought revival to his people so that they would be awakened, so that they would be refreshed and renewed and invigorated to live in that truth that we have been built. Hallelujah. With victory in our design. Therefore, we are destined for victory. So my brothers and sisters, on Saturday, we're going to continue to cultivate this fire of revival. And then on Sunday morning, I'm so excited. My brother a man from another mother, but the same father. <laughs> he is coming to share a mighty word of God with us this Sunday. Uh, that's Elder Aaron, Aaron Hayes from, from Browns Memorial Church of God in Christ. I believe that God has a powerful word that he has graced on us this season around victory. Amen. So you don't want to miss this because my brothers and sisters, victory is the verdict. Yes, the verdict is victory. I don't care what you've been going through, what it looked like, what you've been through. My brothers and sisters, victory is the verdict. Yes, the verdict is victory. So I want to see you on Saturday at 8 a.m. for prayer at the altar. Amen. And I want you to join us on Sunday at 11 a.m. Amen. For worship, for our worship experience, our Sunday worship experience. Amen. As we come together and experience God in a mighty way. So let's go ahead and dive into our devotion for this morning. I want to first do a recap. We've been in this theme all week titled The Reward of the Finisher. Somebody say, I'm going to finish the work because the finisher has a reward for me. Oh, yes. I'm going to finish the work because the finisher. Yes, that's Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. He has a reward for me. Yes, my brothers and sisters, um, really in, in, in the first or excuse me, the second and uh, third chapters of Revelation, it really describes this reward. 
And we see this, my brothers and sisters, where he's going through um, going through to these seven different churches. Amen. And each one of them, he talks about their condition. And then he also expresses that because of their endurance and because they did not give up and came out victorious, there's a reward that's for them. Amen. And so watch this. The first one, we, we didn't even talk. Well, we talked about, I could say, um, the weeks prior, which was, of course, eternal life. Life. Eternal life is the first reward. And then um, we go a little further. The second reward is what we talked about on Sunday, this past Sunday. And that's the victor's crown. The victor's crown of life is what's the second reward. Amen. For the one who is victorious. And then on Monday, we brought up the third reward. And that is the hidden manna. Yes, manna is what God used to sustain his people. He fed them out in the wilderness. God said that he's going to give us the hidden manna. Yes, my brothers and sisters. And then watch this. The next one, which we talked about on Tuesday, is authority. Yes, that's for the one who not only endured, but was obedient to God's word. Authority. God wants to reward you with authority. So stay obedient. Obedience is better than sacrifice and to hearken better than the fat of rams. So stay obedient to God's word. And then on Wednesday, the third day of this work week, we declared um, we declare that the, the, the let's see here. That's the fifth reward is the book of life. So um, excuse me, the bride in the book is what we titled it as. Therefore, meaning that Our name is written in the book of life and we're also presented as the bride of Christ to the father. Amen. And so yesterday we talked about uh, this sixth reward and that is strength, stability and signature. So God gives us supernatural strength. And then, of course, he gives us stability like never before, meaning that we'll never leave the temple of God ever again. Amen. And then lastly, signature, meaning that now that we have completed the race, we have come out victorious. Now he's going to sign the name of his father. He's going to sign the name of his father's holy city. And then he's going to sign his own name, which is his new name. Amen on us and really that's making us <laughs> I talked about how that compares to the signature series of a product line my brothers and sisters we're all made in his image but when we become victorious we become the signature series or the signature version of ourselves now today as we're wrapping this up I want you to know my brothers and sisters that as Jesus declares in And let's see here. Revelation chapter three, verse 21. I'm going to read it. He says to the victor to the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. And so my brothers and sisters, hallelujah, I want you to understand that Jesus is giving us the right to the throne. If we overcome, if we don't give up, if we continue to fight the good fight of faith and we come out victorious simply through enduring and being obedient, understand that God, Jesus, is going to give us the right to the throne. That is the final reward. That's the seventh reward that he issues out to the churches. He says that I'm going to give you the right to the throne. My brothers and sisters, uh, in, 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 Col- in Colossians chapter uh, chapter three, verse two, if I'm correct, he talks about setting our affections on things above right up there where Christ is sitting on the right hand of the father on the throne. We got to keep our focus up there so that one day we could have right to that same throne that we've been watching. I want you to know today that your fight or that the work that you've been putting in is not for nothing. You have been putting in effort. You've been fighting strong. For some of us, uh, we may may have been fighting low key, so to speak, 
people don't know what's going on and that's fine because guess who knows God knows God knows that you've been seeking his face even though it may not be evident in the eyes of others he's been seeing it and guess what he's going to reward what you've been doing in secret out in the open hallelujah for some of you he's been developing behind closed doors for some of you he's been preparing your heart when others didn't know it and God is getting ready to display you openly not for your glory but for his glory hallelujah and he can trust you because you won't steal his glory that's why he wants to use you there are some who try to steal his glory there are some who try to steal or or try to take away or take uh, I really say um, receive it for themselves and exalt themselves the way that Satan uh, tried to do he said I want it he said I'm going to exalt myself above the throne of God Satan wanted to receive the glory instead of God and that's why he got kicked out of heaven this won't be the case with you because when you look over your life you declare that there's nothing there's no way that I would be here if it had not been for the love of God if it had not been for God who was on my side we sing the song where would I be and yes He's going to elevate you and he's going to reward you, my goodness, by giving you the right to the throne. I want to pray for you today. I want to pray for you because you've been strong. You've been faithful. And I want to pray that God continues to give you grace. Yes, meaning that his strength would be made perfect in your weakness. I want to encourage you with this. I don't know if perhaps you understand or have any experience with fasting, but I want to encourage you to go on a fast or even pray about going on a fast. I want you to ask God, what does that fast look like? Because everybody's on a different level. Perhaps you don't you don't know what fasting looks like. I'm going to send out. I'm going to share a link. Perhaps we'll talk about this on Sunday. I'm going to share instructions on how to fast so that you can go on a fast as God leads you. Amen. But I believe that he wants to take you to a deeper level. I believe that he wants to uh, crucify. He wants you to crucify that flesh even the more so that your spirit man can take can take residence even greater inside of your being. Yes, we need to walk in the spirit. And in order to walk in the spirit, we've got to crucify this flesh, meaning we've got to weaken this flesh so that the spirit man takes rulership over this body. So let's pray as you begin to move forward and higher in him. Father, we give you praise and honor today. Father, we give you glory for giving us life and health and strength. You are good and your mercy endures forever. Father, forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Lord, make us right in your presence. And Lord, we thank you that you're faithful and just, as your word says, to do that very thing as long as we offer our confession to you. And Lord, today we give you praise and honor for all things that you have done. Father, if we just simply reflect back over the last six days, Father, everything that you have done for us, Father, you are worthy of our praise and honor. And God, we give it to you in this moment. And Lord, we offer up our supplication at this moment, our ask, our request unto you. Father, first off, we're grateful for the reward that is awaiting us. And therefore, Father, we've made up in our minds that we won't give up. But Lord, you understand that our strength is limited. So Father, we pray for grace. Father, we say as Apostle Paul that you, excuse me, we quote as Jesus told Apostle Paul that your strength is made perfect in our weakness. So therefore, Father, we won't act like we've got it all together. We won't make it seem like it was by our might. No, Father, it wasn't by our power, but God, it's by your spirit. So, Father, we invite you into every area of our lives and say, have your way. Father, give us strength in the areas that we are weak. Father, give us grace in the areas that we are broken. Father, the areas that we want to walk away and give up. Father, we need your strength. And God, we receive it right now in the name of Jesus. 
And Lord, as we move forward and my brothers and sisters prepare to go on fast for those of them that will commit to this, this call. Father, I pray that, God, you would strengthen them because, Lord, you are getting ready to pour out your spirit in the most magnificent way. And, Father, we want to make make up, make way for your spirit. My God, we want to make way for your spirit to flow in our lives without without resistance, without hindrance. Father, we want to receive you. You said that your spirit would not dwell in an unclean place. Well, Father, we know, number one, that, God, you're the one that purified us by the blood of Jesus. We're we're made righteous by our faith, but God, we will not cause them to be crucified afresh by living a life that is unworthy in us and un unacceptable according to your standards. So, Father, we thank you that, God, you're preparing us, that, God, you're positioning us, and we are posturing ourselves to receive the pearl of heaven, to receive your precious Holy Spirit. And, Lord, as we close out this prayer, we pray the way that Jesus taught us to pray, and we say, Our Father who art in heaven, holy is your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Lord, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Father, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the hand of the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. And all of God's children say, Amen. God bless you all. This is Pastor Enrique Brooks of Thrive Church. We give God praise for your presence. Remember this, revival has come for the victorious. Yes, victory is built into your design. Therefore, you are destined and designed for victory. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow at 8 a.m. for prayer at the altar and on Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for our Sunday worship experience. God has brought revival for his people, and I'm so excited to see what's going to happen. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.